So, Clive went to see his doctor for a routine checkup. Upon inspecting Clive, the doctor seemed perplexed and insisted on carrying out some tests. Following the initial tests, again, the doctor has a furrowed brow and a look of concern on his face. What's the issue, doctor? Is there something wrong? Asked Clive. The doctor claimed he had a sinking suspicion, but wanted to perform a few more tests. Eventually, the results came back and the doctor sat Clive down for a serious chat. I'm going to be honest with you, Clive. It's not good news, I'm afraid. It seems you have a very rare disease known in the medical field as Yellow 84. Only 84 people have ever been known to have the disease, and every single one of them turned yellow just before they died. I regret to inform you that you don't have long left, so it would be a wise decision to start making preparation. Clive walked out of the doctor's office, determined not to let this information bog him down and for his illness to ruin his life, he purchases a scratch card as, after all, he doesn't have much to lose. To his surprise, he wins 10,000 pounds. He then buys a lottery ticket for that night and leaves. He runs home to give his wife the good and bad news that they have just won a pot of money, however their time together is now limited. They agree that life really is too short and decide to make the most of the short time they have left. Whilst planning on how they will spend their time, the lottery numbers are announced and Clive has won the jackpot of five million pounds. With their new wealth, Clive and his wife plan holidays and cruise trips to all of the places they discussed but never managed to see. They spend a couple of months traveling taking in the wonders of the world and enjoying their time together. Clive also buys his wife a new car, pays off the mortgage, and makes sure that his wife will have everything she will need in life following his imminent passing. After their long trips and they have returned back to normal life, they decide to head to the bingo one night. Whilst there, Clive manages to win the first line, the second line, and a full house. In fact, he ended up winning every prize on off that night. He ventures up to the window to collect his winnings, and the prize master looks at him and says, I know you. You're becoming pretty famous. First off, you win 10,000 pounds on a scratch card. That same day, you win a further 5 million pounds on the lottery, and you've just won every prize in this bingo hall tonight. You must be the luckiest man alive. At this, Clive narrows his brow and yells, Lucky? You think I'm lucky? I'll have you know, I have yellow 84. The end of his shouting echoing. The prize master lowers his head for a second, and snaps it back up in an instant, his eyes wide and says, Did you say you have yellow 84? Congratulations. You've won the raffle as well. <laughs> there was a very cranky old woman who found herself in trouble for stealing from a nearby grocery store. From the moment she was caught, she was nothing but a nuisance to everyone involved, starting with the store's manager, moving on to the security personnel, and not sparing even the police officer who escorted her out. She grumbled, fussed, and critiqued every single aspect of the situation, making it a thoroughly unpleasant experience for all. When her day in court arrived, a hush fell over the room as she stood before the judge. Everyone braced for a stormy interaction. With a serene demeanor, the judge inquired about the item she had pilfered. Without a trace of regret, the woman responded, I took just a stupid can of peaches. Intrigued and still composed, the judge questioned her motives for the theft. With a tone dripping with irritation, she retorted, I was hungry and didn't have any money on me. Interested, the judge further inquired about the number of peaches in the can. Responding sharply, she said, Nine. But why does that matter to you? With patience, the judge explained, Because I'm sentencing you to nine days in jail, one for each peach in the can. It seems to me a suitable punishment. 
Just as the judge was about to officially conclude the sentencing, a quiet man in the back of the courtroom, who had been silently observing the proceedings, timidly raised his hand to speak. Caught off guard but open to listening, the judge permitted. Yes, sir, what is it you wish to say in this matter? The husband stated, Your Honor, I just thought it might be important for you to know that she also stole a can of peas. A woman confident and self-assured found herself at a crossroads due to her family's expectations. Despite her accomplishments and independence, her parents were insistent that she marry. Torn between her desire for autonomy and her familial obligations, she sought the advice of a psychiatrist. I've come to a point where I'm questioning the whole idea of marriage, she began. I'm educated, I've got a great job, and I can take care of myself. I don't see why I should need a husband at all. Yet, my parents won't stop pressuring me into marriage. What should I do? The psychiatrist listened intently, nodding in understanding. After a moment of contemplation, he offered his perspective. It's clear you're destined for a successful life. You're capable of achieving anything you set your mind to. However, life is unpredictable. There will be times when things don't go as planned. You might encounter failures, your plans may fall apart, and sometimes, despite your best efforts, your dreams might remain just out of reach. When faced with these inevitable setbacks, whom will you hold responsible? Who will you blame when things don't go your way? The woman, taken aback by the question, quickly responded, No, I wouldn't blame myself. The psychiatrist smiled gently and delivered his closing thought. Exactly. That's precisely why you need a husband.